Good afternoon, second grade champions. We are continuing our book, Kitchens in the Kitchen. And we are beginning on uh, page 16, chapter two. Here you see a picture of our mother and her kittens. And we're in a predicament because the mother decided to have the kittens in a kitchen. Um, and that's wonderful, except the family, um, they don't want the kittens in their kitchen. So we're in a little bit of a predicament as we begin chapter two. Mr. Williams said his final word, then stormed out of the room. Tears sprang to Mandy's eyes. She looked in desperation at Ms. Wis Mrs. Williams. The old woman raised her eyebrows and rolled her eyes. She patted her neat gray hair. Just give him a minute to cool down, she said. She lifted the laundry basket lid to take a peek for herself. My, my, she murmured. He can't mean it, Mandy said to James, who was trying to drag her out of the kitchen onto the back porch. He can't just sentence four perfectly harmless kittens to death. Can he? It isn't fair. James shook his head and kept on pulling. Come on, we better go. Mrs. Williams, Mandy pleaded. The custodian's wife carefully watched the rose pattern teacups. She put them away in a high glass fronted cupboard. I'm saying nothing, she said steadily. Mandy shook herself free of James. But it isn't fair. I mean, what have those poor little kittens ever done to anybody? They deserve a chance to live just like anyone else. You can't just chuck them away because they happen to have been born in an unusual place. On top of my husband's best shirts, Mrs. Williams reminded her. My Eric's very particular about his shirts. She turned to face Mandy, who was a head taller than she, but thin as a piece of string. Anyhow, whoever said life was fair? But if he moves them, they'll die. Walton will abandon them. Again, the tears pricked her eyelids. Mrs. Williams stared up at her. Walton? She folded her arms and kept her gaze steady. The mother cat. I've called her Walton after the school. I wanted her to sound as if she belonged somewhere, as if she was looked after and had a home and somebody who cared, Mandy rushed on. The tears were rolling down her cheeks now. They ran with a salty taste into her mouth. She remembered the half-starved cat being dumped in the school doorway. She thought of herself. What would have happened to her if Emily and Adam Hope hadn't taken her in and cared for her when she was tiny? Mandy, James whispered, don't cry. You see worse things than this at the Ark every day of the week, remember? No, let her alone, Mrs. Williams said thoughtfully. She's right. They deserve a chance. She took Mandy by the hand and set her down at the table. Late afternoon sun filtered in through the white neck curtains. But for goodness sake, dry your eyes, young woman. I can hear my Eric coming back across the yard and he can't abide waterworks. She pulled a clean handkerchief out of her apron pocket and handed it to Mandy. Quick, blow your nose. Will you help us? Mandy whispered. The custodian's big boots tramped up the steps and across the porch. If you let the kittens stay, I'll come here every day, twice a day, to help look after them. I'll... Shh, Ms. Williams warned. Her husband hung his cap on the door peg. She stood up and leaned forward evenly, with clenched fists down on the table. What the... Mr. Williams' face darkened as he caught sight of Mandy and James. I thought I told you to clear out. What's the matter? Are you deaf? Now, Eric, Mrs. Williams began steadily. Don't you now, Eric, me. Now, Eric, she insisted. This young girl has been explaining to me again about these kittens being moved. It seems the mother won't have any more to do with them if we interfere. They have to be left alone. A loud meow of agreement from inside the basket backed up the end of Miss Williams's firm speech. Thin squeaks followed after in a kind of chorus. 
Mr. Williams paced up and down the kitchen. Stand still, Eric, and listen. Hands on hips, the tiny woman in the flowery apron, apron confronted her heavyweight husband. Where's the harm in it? You've got a drawer full of shirts up those stairs, most of them hardly worn. There's even one still in its package, pins and all. The one that your sister gave you last Christmas. She eyed him sternly. You know I don't like shirts straight from the wrapping, he grumbled. They're stiff and they itch. I'll wash it. She didn't flinch. Then you can wear it this Sunday to church, all right? Mandy held her breath. She had the good sense not to interfere in this argument, even though the little wailing sound from inside the basket was tugging at her heartstrings. James still stood sentry by the door, ready to escape. Mr. Williams pointed an accusing finger at the basket. My best blue shirt, my favorite, he reminded her angrily, but it was the last trace of resistance. He knew when he was beaten. Now, Eric, it won't come to any harm. This young girl knows all about animals, don't you? Mandy nodded and gasped. My mom and dad are both vets in Welford at Animal Ark. Mrs. Williams nodded too. See, she's a good girl. She promised to come in here twice a day to help look after those poor little things. They won't get under your feet. They'll just stay in there nice and cozy while Walton tends them. Walton? Mr. Williams interrupted, looking curiously at Mandy. The mother cat, Mrs. Williams said, steady as ever. Crazy name for a cat, he grumbled, but he was definitely weakening. Well, the fierce little woman demanded. Well, he scratched his lined forehead with broad, work-worn fingers. All right, that's settled, she said, like a suitcase snapping shut. The girl will come in here each day until the kittens can begin to fend for themselves. Mr. Williams grunted. That means yes, she reported to Mandy and James. Mandy jumped up from the table, able to breathe at last. Oh, thank you, she said in a rush. I'll go right away and get some food and extra vitamins and things for Walton. I'll be back as soon as I can. Walton will need lots of looking after being such a small cat, and we may have to help her feed her kittens. I'll bring milk and a dropper just in case. She won't have that much milk herself four and four is a lot for her to be especially being so run down when she was astray we'll need to whoa hold your horses mr williams backed off against the wall not so fast he turned to james now listen boy maybe i can talk sits to you james stood attention ready to listen man to man i'm telling you straight my wife amy is too soft-hearted by far Everyone knows that, and I've agreed to let those darn kittens stay put on, my, on top of my shirts because of her. I don't like it, but I want a quiet life. When my wife makes up her mind about something, I generally give in. Mrs. Williams smiled at Mandy, her hands clasped meekly in front of her. But, said Mr. Williams, I just want to give your girlfriend here a word of warning. Mandy saw James' face turn red at the word girlfriend, but Mr. Williams thundered on. Now, I'm a mild-mannered guy, but before you both go off running off for food and vitamins or whatever else, I want to make it clear that I won't put up with these smelly things camping out on my best shirts for a day longer than necessary. Is that clear? James nodded. Mandy moved over to the door to stand beside him. They watched Mr. Williams' face take on the old angry look. Quiet life or not, I'll give you just one week, he warned, and that'll be that. After that, it's the end for the nasty little creatures. Mandy felt her heart go thump. She felt the blood drain from her face. What do you mean? I mean what I say. I'm giving you seven days. Find good homes for those kittens within the week or else. He stood with his feet planted wide apart, his face like a storm. Or else what? Mandy gasped. Or else I'll deal with them myself. He turned and stamped out of the kitchen, slamming the door after him. Well, he's something, isn't he? Uh, we will stop there and we'll begin tomorrow on page 23. Kittens in the Kitchen. Thank you so much, champions. 
Have a really good day and stay safe. Take care.